then. And all of her early hits especially drove me up the motherfucking wall. I love Nicki Minaj. Now, has every single record been to my liking? Not as much. I mean, to be honest, the, when it starts to get emotional and sappy and pianos and ballads, it's it's not for me. What I, what I want is Roman, okay? I want Roman and nothing but Roman. If you know, you know, okay? I want Nicki Minaj telling, calling bitches other sons. I want her shitting on people. I want her, like, you know, reading the bitches for Phil. That is what we love. That is what we want. And of course, we want Nicki to uh, express herself emotionally and do her thing. That's nice. But it doesn't mean that I'm bopping to it or living to it. And to be honest, the last couple album projects weren't really catching my ear like the old stuff did now i've enjoyed super freaky girl and uh some of the more recent things but i was really looking forward to pink friday to to be a return to form i want to live in gag city and be gag miss minaj and i think from what i've heard so far she may have done it honey there seems to be some bangers on this new record and i'm going to be going into it in depth track by track on my patreon which is patreon.com slash gayest of all time me and adam joseph are going to dive into the pink friday pool and give our thoughts on every sound beat lyric and slay on the new album and so that'll be out this week at patreon.com slash gayest of all time if you want to go deep with me on Nicki Minaj. Now, one of the things I really loved about this launch of Pink Friday 2 is the creation of Gag City. Now, Gag City started off as a quote by Nicki Minaj when she made an ex post on November 3rd where she said, y'all are going to Gag City. And of course, the Barb's quickly developed this into a concept for an AI generated utopia where cotton candy clouds and ethereal atmosphere evoke the visuals from Pink Friday, too. And of course, on the cover of the album, Nikki seems to be in Pink Friday on a flying subway car across a pink metropolis. That's where the Barb's and AI stepped in and everyone began creating their own landscapes and views of Gag City, the pink metropolis where everyone turns a cunt. We got pink jumbo jets. We have pink clouds. We have pink skyscrapers. We have pink pools. It depicts Gag City as an all pink utopia covered in pink clouds where all the citizens seem to wear pink. I mean, the world of Gag City has grown moment to moment. There's the, ga the Gag City military, the Gag City, City zombie apocalypses. Of course, people made the arrivals of different celebrities to Gag City, including Abby Lee Miller, who rolled up to the gates of Gag City in her wheelchair. Michael Jackson, Lana Del Rey, even Trisha Paytas tweeted a picture of herself arriving at Gag City and said, wait a minute, am I really there? <laughs> An Ariana Grande ponytail spaceship landed outside of Gag City. Now, it's also very amusing to see Time Magazine and Newsweek and all these other articles writing. The term gag or gagged was popularized in the LGBTQ plus community to positively express amazement or shock over someone or something. <laughs> And thanks to AI, honey, you can anything you can dream in Gag City is there. And who else has been dreaming about Gag City? Brands, big brands. I mean, honey, Dunkin' Donuts said we're here to caffeinate Gag City. Oreos created a imaginary pink Oreo factory in Gag City. Spotify called Gag City its latest sound town. I mean, talk about a successful launch of something. This is the star and the fans and AI joining together to really do a serve. And I'm pretty sure the Gag City tour with Nicki Minaj will be coming soon and the set will be stunning. There's plenty more gags to talk about beyond Gag City this week. So, honey, let's get into it. Get into get it. Get into it. Get into it. Get into it. Calling all the basic bitches. Calling all the basic bitches. There's a new announcement. You're basic.
Do you recognize that sound? Calling all the basic bitches. That is to me one of the most iconic early aughts YouTube uh, sounds of all. And that was by the YouTuber Lohanthony. And Lohanthony was kind of back in the spotlight after pictures of him in the military appeared on his mom's Instagram page. I saw the pictures of Lohanthony in the military and I thought to myself, what happened to Lohanthony? And so I went into Reddit. And it seems like every year for the last few years, there is a post that says, whatever happened to Lohanthony? And everybody once again fills everybody in on the story, so I'll do the same for you. Now, if you don't remember Lohanthony... Lohanthony is second! But technically first, because I'm a piece of shit and haven't uploaded a video in about a month. Video of Zoe. Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy Anthony up in the Hizzy house. And you know what? Let's just jump right into this video going to be a hashtag ask long anthony because we have a lot of things that we need to get caught up on we have a lot of things that we need to get caught up on so um brain if you could get me to speak some english that would be perfect low anthony started on youtube as part of one of those weird things that people's parents set up called seven incredible kids and wednesday was anthony and he started vlogging then eventually had his own youtube channel and you know the young man was a little light in the loafers just from the way he spoke, as you can hear. And there were clues to what his sexuality might be and just how he sounded. <clears throat> um, and of course, yes, eventually he did come out on his YouTube channel, as of course all young budding stars do. Of course, he took his name from Lindsay Lohan. And unfortunately, it seems like he suffered some of the same fates as Lindsay Lohan and made very gay and very positive about being gay videos for many years. Hey, what's up, bitches? It's Anthony, and I sit here in my oversized wolf tee in my bed of the hotel I'm staying in in New York fucking city to tell you that gay marriage is legal in every state in the U.S. S. I wish I opened my laptop up just about 30 minutes earlier because these ads were not as dry as they are right now. Let me just say that. To think that I and a countless amount of others have grown up in a time and place in the U.S. where love has legally only been between a man and a woman is fucking beyond me. Was friends with Ariana. Got so famous that at one point he had 1.3 million subscribers on YouTube, 1.4 million on TikTok. I mean, this kid was really famous. He got so famous that he moved with his mom to Hollywood to continue his star to rise. He was collabing with everybody. He had a bright, big smile. He was being gay as fuck. And we celebrate that. I mean, at the time when, when all the basic bitches came out, I was playing that soundbite in the club. Mark Jacobs and Kate Moss posted like a video, recreated it in a video. He was so famous that New York Magazine called him the littlest big diva in an attempt at shade. And they, someone else wrote another magazine that he was a role model for gay children and teens around the world. I mean, he put himself all out on the internet, as you can see from this video. Of course, thank goodness, the YouTube detectives have saved his old posts and have reposted them so we can dive into videos like this where he really put himself on front street with my first trip to a gay club. I peed myself in an Uber, the DJ snuck us in, and I made out with a married man in the VIP section. <laughs> and I have live footage from my iPhone of the night. My first gay club experience. Let's go. This was in 2014 in New York City. Um, I'm not going to tell you who I shared this experience with because I don't know if they want this experience to be on the internet, but it happened to me. So, I'm gonna share it regardless and leave them out of it. This was a time period where I was frequently visiting New York City via train. We'll, he'll be out in a second, we'll sneak you in. That happens, we get inside. While we're dancing, the guy that DM'd us introduced us to his friends and all this stuff. And um, the way the gay community works, I don't know if anyone believes in friendship because the people we instantly met instantly came on to us. There was grinding, there was lip touching, there was that whole stuff on the dance floor that occurs in gay clubs. And I was okay with it, but um, I stuck to this one guy in particular who I was introduced to who had a beard, tattoos all over his arms, and just everything about him was right. So weird to talk about this on camera, but this 
literally a once in a lifetime experience and it's the one thing that I look back at in my past and go, that actually fucking happened. And I experienced it. But yeah, we were all over each other and um, he was really buff and just his body, I needed to be on top of him. And it's so bad, but we left the dance floor and we went to this like section that was roped off and <laughs> I was all over him. I just felt like he clocked out of his shift at the lumber yard and he came home to his wife that he was thinking about during work all day and I was that wife. So he basically grew up in front of everybody's eyes. I mean, he was started to do movies and TV shows, but then he disappeared from the internet for a while. And when he came back on the internet in 2020, he removed all of his past videos and posted a 41 minute long video called Jesus Delivers Surviving Sexuality, which he renounced all the earlier videos, including calling all the basic bitches. <laughs> and he denounced homosexuality saying a lot of stuff in this video that people found to be very, I've just been to conversion camp. The topic is my sexuality and my call to Christian celibacy. It's no coincidence that through pursuing my same-sex attraction, I was also addicted to alcohol. I was also addicted to weed. I was also trying hallucinogenics. That earthly pleasures brought to me. Did God make me gay? Did God allow the situation to be? Did God force this struggle upon me? God gave me the answers that he is love no matter what and that anything that we encounter other than that love is not of God. Turn around and tell those people. Tell them. I'm not gay no more. I am delivered. I don't like men no more. I said I like women. Women, 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 women. I said women. This is weird because people have been saying that he went through conversion camp, yet his mom was publicly so supportive of him being a gay teen from when he was little and she was doing articles and magazines and all the rest of this about how she cares about him no matter what. I mean, the mom was in the back seat of the car when RuPaul did the RuPaul drives with him and RuPaul said this. Is it weird to watch your old videos It now? is, because I don't notice the change. Ah. Uh, you, are you embarrassed by the old videos? I am not embarrassed. Good. I will flaunt anything. Good. I will never be embarrassed of anything that I've done. I love it. Promise me that you'll always keep that. Of course. Okay, good. And obviously that was not the case. Now, when you look on TikTok and you look at this video, people are like, hmm, there's the mom in the back. It was all her fault. But... That seems like a real jump from where she was publicly doing articles that are like, I support my son no matter what. Now, Lohanthony said he did not attend conversion therapy because he made a video called Conversion Therapy and God's Truth, but he was abandoning lusts, both homosexual and heterosexual alike. So basically desexualizing in all ways, shapes and forms. Or what would a world be filled with people just staring at the mirror all day, saying, I love you, hypnotizing themselves into self-obsession, into vanity. I wasn't thinking big picture. I was thinking in the moment. I needed love, but the love was there. And I thought that I could provide myself with that love. But I understood and I understand now that God can only provide that love. Now, in the surviving sexuality video, he said he'd been called to Christian celibacy, which is a term that people point out is echoed in conversion therapy, where they want you to, like, you can be gay, just never touch another man or look another man again and marry a woman, okay? Um, but I think what Christ focuses on when he tells us to deny ourselves is that when we say no to ourselves and when we die to ourselves, we're coming alive in him. We're coming alive to um, our God, our maker, our creator, who is good and our, our shepherd who leads us to green pastures and, and still waters. And um, so, yeah, that's kind of my response to suppression. Well, he still sounds gay, even after finding Christ. He said in this video, when I entered middle school, I began what would be my decade-long search for gay love that will ultimately end with disappointment toward the solace I thought I was bred to solely find in men, a void which would later be filled by Jesus Christ. One thing that... I've always been seeking for is true joy and true happiness. 
And I, I've always had fun searching for that joy. You know, I didn't always do the best things to find that joy. Uh, um, but I have always been looking for joy. I've always been looking for true happiness and true peace. I just didn't know what that looked like or what that truly was. Um, but then I found Christ and he showed me who I really am. And he showed me that I have a cross and that with him, I can pick up that cross and walk with him and follow him to true joy and true peace. (sighs) Okay. One sad and dark thing is that Anthony said he was sexually assaulted at a young age, implying that that made him gay. I never understood my own sexuality because I was so damaged, so broken, so bruised because of these situations. Adding that his relationships with men felt like trying to fit a circle into a square. Well, some people say that if you have a weird shaped dick. Now, people pointed out when this came out that this all perpetrates false ideas about trauma and being gay and that portrays same-sex attraction as a negative side effect to something bad happening to you like getting molested. It seems like Hollywood was pretty rough because it seemed like he got into a cycle that he couldn't get out of. He said he got into drugs and I guess being promiscuous and that led him to where only one place you can go from that to Jesus. Jesus, drop the charge. It's no coincidence that through pursuing my same sex attraction, I was also addicted to alcohol. I was addicted to weed. I was also trying hallucinogenics. I was also addicted to money. This sounds like everyone in Hollywood. So, yeah. I was also addicted to views. I was addicted to attention. Now, he says he's not here to condemn anyone or say what's sinful or isn't sinful or judge anyone, but he's judging because he's no longer allowing lust in his life. And he's apparently going to join the military and it's straight. Did God make me gay? Did God allow the situation to be? Did God force this struggle upon me? God gave me the answers that he is love no matter what and that anything that we encounter other than that love is not of god so this is quite a big change from um, calling all the basic bitches or going to the gay club or doing any of those things i mean this is a complete personality redo this was a couple years ago i mean this all came back up again because we saw the photos of him having joined the military so the question is, what the fuck happened to Lo Anthony? It must have been something awful to really switch him into this Jesus mode. If you look up Lo Anthony on TikTok, the decree is that he went through conversion therapy. But he himself, like we said, denies that. But this all sounds very conversion campy. And if it he didn't go to conversion camp, what the fuck happened? Like something very traumatic must have happened to have him completely want to get rid of every aspect of his old life and what he really spent over a decade building. I mean, he spends a lot of time now in the forest reading Bibles and in rooms with nothing but a white walls and a cross on the wall. I mean, I can't think of anything worse to be honest. Oh my God. But something must have really happened that was horrible to get him there. Now the mystery is, did he get to sent to conversion camp by his parents who seemingly were supportive for such a long time? Did he, just meet some Christian, good old Christian people who told them the way to solve all his problems is Jesus. I mean, now he's in a place where he says he's denying lust. So that means living a sexless lifestyle because you're never going to get married. So you should never have sex. And so you'll just be like a, a neutered person forever. That's very conversion campy. But look, whatever it is, low Anthony, we just want the best for you. So if this is how you're happy, then God, God bless. So no matter what happens, we'll always still have. Calling all the basic bitches. Calling all the basic bitches. There's a new announcement. You're basic. While we've lost Lohanthony from the Rainbow family, we've got to hold on to the stars that we do have. And this young man is someone I want to hold up. <laughs> Plex, Freunde, hast du schon mal gehabt, Bitch? Bitch, guck mich mal an. Guck mal, was für eine Schönheit ich bin. Zehn. Oh mein Gott. Honey, wie viele Ex-Freunde hast du, Bitch? Ich bin viel zu jung, ich darf keinen Freund haben. Oh mein Gott. Ratatata. Bitch, wie viele Ex-Freunde hast du? Ich hab noch keinen Ex-Freund, Bitch. Oh mein Gott. 
God bless this kid. <laughs> You've seen this on TikTok. This kid interviewing people in the street uh, and saying, beach. I mean, I live. I live. Let's hold this. Let's make sure this king doesn't have to go to conversion therapy camp, please. <laughs> We talked in our past episodes about Lucas Gage and Chris Appleton divorcing. Now, there was a little bit of an update on that story. There was another side of the story that came out. I mean, we could have guessed that supposedly said that Lucas cheated on Chris. They did not have an open relationship. He cheated on Chris. And as soon as Chris found out, he filed for divorce. Still sounds fishy to me. Still sounds fishy. But they've broken up and it turns out there's been a lot of gay breakups uh this year first of all ricky martin and juan yosef broke up now ricky martin and his husband were both hot pieces they cited irreconcilable differences apparently they were having problems since before the pandemic and we know if anyone in the entire world had problems before the pandemic the pandemic amplified the shit and drove them fucking insane happened to me this comes after Ricky Martin had a tough 2022 when his nephew <clears throat> had said that Ricky Martin had been molesting him since he was 11 and tried to sue him for $20 million. Well, Ricky countersued for $20 million back to him, and eventually the nephew withdrew the claims. The nephew had claimed that he had a seven-month-long romantic relationship with Ricky, and it ended when Ricky began stalking and harassing him. Now, Ricky said this was all patently false, false and got on you know got publicly got out there to say it was lies and that his nephew was mentally unstable and got this claims were proven to be false but i'm going to tell you the truth it has been so painful it has been devastating for me for my family for my friends i don't wish this upon anybody to the person that was claiming uh, this nonsense i I wish him the best, and I wish he finds the help so he can start a new life filled with love and truth and joy, and he doesn't hurt anybody else. I mean, the nephew went rogue and posted Ricky's cell phone number on his Instagram and was sending Ricky 10 text messages a day. And of course, that was when you get uh, accused of uh, having inappropriate relations with your nephew, you're going to lose out on some probably lucrative deals, which Ricky said he did. So I can imagine that put a little bit of a strain on the marriage. <clears throat> Billy Porter and his husband, Adam Smith, ended their six year marriage, not during the actor strike. Oy. Now Benjamin Masani and Anderson Cooper broke up after many 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 years together now he used to own the bar across the street from where i lived which now became club coming in new york city thing is they broke up but they still co-parent a child together so if you're gonna break up that's the way to do it I and mean, you're still friends you don't have to live together and you can have your little baby together <laughs> after posting these people uh, the people over at BuzzFeed posted 20 other gay couples you might have forgotten was a thing. So let's take a little trip down memory lane. First being Riken and Lance Bass. Honey, do you remember this? Do you remember this? This was post in sync Lance, okay? And Riken had just come off winning the amazing race where he and his then boyfriend who was, I think, also in the military, they were giving you very butch queen. Okay, butch, butch, climbing a rock, zip lining. Um, he was, because I think Riken was in the Air Force or something like that. Um, anyway, he was, he had a hot body, he was handsome. And of course, immediately after Amazing Race, he went, he tried to go Hollywood. 
he famously was on the A-list New York, if you remember that. What the word for hot boy is here? Mahu. Well, then we are so Mahulicious. The gay housewives are back. Keep the guest list tight and keep security tighter. <laughs> We're not gonna have any problems like we did last year, right? The frenemies are at it again. Spooky! <laughs> it smells like onions and broccoli. Ah! My naked body ended up on the internet. It was good exposure. <laughs> You're the only bitch I care about, the only bitch I would not want against me. Get out. The A-List New York. Uh, a, a, go, a long gone but not forgotten gay reality show on Logo, honey. I enjoyed it. I wish it had survived. They got together, I believe, when Lance was still in the closet. And then they broke up shortly after Lance came out of the closet. That was an odd pairing for sure. I mean, that was more of a um, uh, a glass of water and a quenched thirst. You know what I mean? Both in two ways. One, that Lance was looking, wanting to drink that delicious water to quench his gay thirst. And Riken was wanting to drink that glass of water to quench his fame thirst. Jeff Lethem and Colton Haynes, remember that? That was when Colton Haynes married an, a daddy type uh, florist. <laughs> I don't know how daddy you can be if you're a florist, mm, says a guy who's a gay podcaster. <laughs> that did not end well. They got divorced after six months of marriage. That was another one that seemed like they Colton Haynes was looking for stability and a love and then married this older rich florist who i believe was chris kardashian's florist so at least he married the right florist but it went incredibly sour uh because i remember seeing some of colton haynes posts like post-divorce posts and they were very much like isn't it fabulous to be in your own bed without some disgusting smelly stinky man burping and farting all over you in your sleep mm-hmm Matt Wilkes and Gus Kenworthy. I went to school with Matt Wilkes and I saw him and Gus Kenworthy at the gym one time <laughs> in West Hollywood. And I said, hello, like a thirst bucket. And Gus Kenworthy was very nice. They were, I mean, talk about a handsome couple. Matt Wilkes was a freshman when I was a senior at acting school at Boston University. And I remember he uh, appeared fully formed from the head of Zeus. Do you know what I mean? He was stacked and racked already and looking good and a good actor how dare he be so handsome and then he snagged himself gus kenworthy honey and they were together for four years but now they're both doing fine max is matt is a successful actor and gus kenworthy still could get it mm. Hot as fuck. salvador and ross matthews broke up i did not know about that they were together for 10 years See, Ross Matthews be keeping his private life on the DL. That's the way to, I mean, I understand, that's probably the way to go. Look, I'm all for you being public about coming out that one time. But then the rest of the time, you don't need to tell me anything. Anything interesting I need to know will be in the blind items. <laughs> Never forget, Ross is a dumb top. You know you want it, baby. Now, here's a blind item that i got directly from a source which former youtuber now gay porn empresario who was famous for his shirtless videos has a secret that nobody knows sitting directly on his chest the famous shirtless guy known for his bulging bosom has a secret that his world famous pecs were not born from the gym, but were made at the doctor's office. I obviously know who the blind item is about, but you'll have to guess. <sighs> Titties! 
Now, many people fantasize about Michael B. Jordan in bed because that man is very good looking. But, honey, <laughs> But Selling Sunset star Brie Tiesi says Michael B. Jordan was not good in bed. Now, uh, Tan France was interviewing her and she was hooked up to a polygraph and he asked is michael b jordan good in bed and she said i'm gonna be in so much trouble but no the lie detector the lie detector test confirmed that tessie was telling the truth <laughs> is michael b jordan good in bed I kind of want to know for myself. Amanda no. wants to know. He's my whole pass. He's my whole pass. Oh, I'm going to be in so much trouble. Oh, shit. No. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's true. Oh, no. I mean... Honey, you got a chance to have sex with Michael B. Jordan, and then you're going to you spill his tea like that. How very rude. Oh, my goodness. So I guess sometimes when people are extremely good looking, they don't feel like they need to do a lot in bed. You know what I mean? They're like, you're lucky to be here. All right. Well, what if you're going to fuck this lady, just remember to do your best because she will spill the tea. Uh, according to Media Takeout, Beyonce and Lady Gaga are working together on a remake of Thelma and Louise. They say, according to a rock-solid insider, Beyonce and Lady Gaga will be teaming up to star in a remake of the 1980s movie Thelma and Louise. Now, that's something we would all want to see, baby. We would want to see, that's basically the telephone video done up big. Is this just a fantasy of some gay assistant who watched the telephone video one too many times, or is this real? Because if it would be real, it would be great. I mean, a Thelma and Louise musical? Is that what we're going to get? Apparently, Beyonce was supposed to be the original star of The Star is Born. But when she got pregnant with her twins right before filming started, she handpicked Lady Gaga as her replacement for the movie. And as we know, it was a huge smash. Now, Lady Gaga promised Beyonce after the movie was a hit that they would work together. And now it's happening. And they would produce the music for the movie as well. Supposedly, the contracts are signed, so everything's a go. Okay, this does seem like a ketamine dream of some um, Lady Gaga and Beyonce stand, but if it were true, I would enjoy that. There's also rumors that Beyonce is going to do a residency at the Sphere in Las Vegas, and that would be something to see. Maybe that would be Act 3. We know Act 1 was Renaissance, Act 2 was the movie, and Act 3 is another album which people have been saying is either a country, a rock, or an acoustic album. Now, will that be an acoustic version of Renaissance, or will it be totally new songs? This is the information that we are just dying to know and delighted to find out whenever we find it out. You. Enrique Iglesias is getting raked across the coals, sweetie, for his bad singing. Now, it has happened before. There has been many uh, internet videos and memes over the years with the supposedly untreated vocals of Enrique Iglesias sounding bad or him singing his songs into one of those auto-tune microphones where they're not fooling anyone. But he is currently on tour in the trilogy tour with two big players in the game, Ricky Martin and Pitbull and Enrique Iglesias is the third part of the trilogy. So they are playing arenas packed with thousands and thousands of people. And they of course are filming the shows and what the video footage shows is undeniably Enrique Iglesias, honey, barely being able to sing. I mean, not that he can't hit the notes, the tone of his voice, the, People are calling him Mickey Mouse. People are saying things like, I can't believe I waited to see Enrique Iglesias for 15 years and now I find out he can't sing. I mean, take a look.
worth the fight. Cause Lord, who do you get paid when I'm free? Now what you done? The one you know Who made your wounds? Wow, it is very brutal. You think that there would be a little more backup uh, technically. I mean, maybe Enrique just doesn't seem to think it's a problem, or maybe he's hearing something different in his in ear monitors than the audience is hearing, because what the audience is hearing sounds very, very bad. Now, some TikTok doctors have said maybe his voice is dehydrated, maybe he's tired, maybe he's whatever. But it seems like during the show, mostly what he's doing is squeaking out the verses and then letting the audience sing the choruses because he doesn't seem to be able to hit the notes. I mean, of course, there's this classic uh, before and after of studio version and real life version of Enrique singing one of his biggest hits. Now, Enrique still looks pretty good. I mean, he's managed to tr sort of freeze in time, mostly by staying real thin and wearing the exact same outfit that he did when he was introduced to us however many years ago. Black baseball cap, black t-shirt, tight black pants. But his performance style is also coming into question. There is an incredible... <laughs> sequence on his tour where he's trying to be sexy and he sort of slides down to the floor and then slides down so he's face down on the floor basically in the hump position and then what i think he thinks he's doing is like a magic mike pony hump the floor but what he really looks like is verse bottom having to actually top for the first time because he's doing a lay there and then his ass goes up, hump, freeze, 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 ass go up, hump, freeze, freeze, freeze. It is quite something. It's interesting. I'll say that. Enrique, pull it together, sweetie. Either lip sync or uh, can wield again and it's back in the news. Now, everybody remembers in 2020 when Zac Efron appeared on something during pandemic. It was like a charity webcast, a star-studded webcast. And when Zac came on the screen from his home, the world said, Oh, my God, what did he do to his face? Because Zach looked bloated. His jaw looked huge, like Fred Flintstone. His lips looked pumped. He looked crazy. And he looked weird. And the whole internet was on fire. Like, what did he do to his face? Why did he ruin his face? Oh, my God. Then he promptly disappeared for a good six months. And when he came out of hiding, his face had seemed to go pretty much back to normal. It got so big that Zach did have to explain it away by saying that in 2013, he had been running in his mansion and had tripped and fallen jaw first onto his marble fountain <laughs> what why would you have a fountain in your living room zach that's a that, that's a hazard and supposedly it had broken his jaw in both in two places and he had to have a lot of surgery and that was the excuse he was giving for his jaw in 2020 looking gigantic actually broke my jaw. I'm observing your jaw to see you had it wired shut and all I did. I was like running through my house and I slipped and fell and hit my face. Okay, you had to recently dispel rumors that you had undergone plastic surgery. You actually experienced <laughs> your jaw being shattered what, yeah. in 2013? Yeah. What did you make of the speculation online? Your mom was even the one that brought it up to you like, what's going on? Why did you feel like you had to address those rumors now? 
I didn't really. Yeah. I didn't feel it at all. You I didn't... just, no, I, when my mom told me, I don't really read the internet, so I don't really give a <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was. It was just if if that's the direction that it was going, it's maybe if he it's was time gonna to get plastic surgery. You wouldn't get that. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> you got a good job, man. No, <laughs> oh my god, um, you're just stirring the pot. <laughs> no, it was funny. It sucked. I almost died. He said that he his jaw had to he had to have the jaw surgery and it expanded because he had to have jaw therapy, and when he stopped doing the therapy the jaw got even bigger. It just kept growing and growing, and that's what's happened. Okay. Now, of course, the detectives have gone back to Zach post the accident in 2014 to get the post-surgery photos, and to be honest, he looks exactly the same as he did before. It's not until 2020 that we see this new mask uber angled jaw on Zach Efron magically appearing. Now, my thought is that what he had done was the diamond jaw facial. Has everyone seen this on TikTok? There's this doctor in Turkey, I believe, because they're doing all the best work in Turkey, sweetie, who is putting filler into men's jaws to give them a more masculine look. This is the same kind of actual masculization surgery that some trans men will get when they're sort of on the tail end of their transition to give their face that more angular masculine look. And the guys in the before and after of this doctor, I mean, they start off with weak chins, round chins, ovally chins. And when he, honey, they come out, they look like the Terminator. They look like action stars. And baby, who can blame them? I mean, if I didn't already have nature's diamond jaw facial, which is a beard, I would want to be run to get that diamond jaw facial myself. The angles are fantastic. It looks great. Now, who knows how long it lasts and how, you know, if it goes wrong, what it looks like, because isn't that the most important thing to think about if you're ever getting plastic surgery, especially if you're a man. Because we know that can go, if you look done as a man, you're done. I mean, it just looks so bad when a guy looks surgy. It doesn't look handsome. I've seen some guys who were so handsome, including a reality star gay celebrity who I once saw on the show that they were on and they were so hot and sexy. And I met them in real life and they were working for a skincare uh company and they had been done and they looked crazy the cheeks it was that filler in the cheeks that really is a killer it doesn't make you look younger just make you look like an alien ladies can get away with it more but men honey never forget kenny rogers okay kenny rogers got that full facelift and he never looked the same again and the same thing is going on with filler at least filler will go away eventually but you're gonna have to live with those big puffy weird face cheeks and it's not now the, I guess the only place to get the filler is in the jaw because that does look good. And I think that's what Zac Efron did. But he's back in the news now because in his new movie, Iron Claw, he is, well, first of all, he's jacked to the max. I mean, he's playing a wrestler, a pro wrestler, as like a group of pro wrestling brothers in the late 80s, early 70s. And he has gotten he was already ripped and shredded and now he is big and puffy leading some tiktok doctors to say he looks like he's been taking some performance enhancing products if you know what i mean and that maybe the change in his face currently is bloat from that situation it doesn't help that he also has been put in the most unflattering blunt bang man shorty wig that i've ever seen i mean i looked at a picture of the guy that he actually played who had a similar haircut to that but it wasn't as ugly as that that was like this one the the wig designer said we've got to go to the ugly wig store and ask them for your ugliest wig we want something real unflattering because that wig is wow and it also shows it also that hair also spotlights his big jaw as well as his big body. And if you look at these before and afters from a few years ago and even just a little while ago till now, his jaw is something different. It's a chin implant. It's the diamond jaw facial. I don't know what it is, but I'm pretty sure it's not just magical jaw growth 
after a surgery from eight years ago. Zach, send me nudes and also the doctor's number for the Diamond Jaw Facial. Okay, sweetie. Work and serve and face. Face, 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 face. Work and serve and face. Face, 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 face. Work and serve and face. Face, face, face. If you enjoyed today's show, then please leave me a nice review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, or wherever the hell else you're listening to this. Send an X about it. Send a Facebook post about it. Do whatever you can because I'm trying to grow and get people to hear the show and enjoy the show. So please help your daddy out and do that. And if you like me and you want to hear more of me, well then, baby, what you got to do is go to patreon.com slash gayest of all time, where I'm podcasting up to three times a week. And I'm talking there, of course, about pop culture, but we're taking deeper dives. And we're also talking about fashion, food, aliens, Bigfoot, sex stuff. I get extremely personal on there and tell stories and throw shade like I never would on a public forum. So if you want to get the real intimate experience, come join me there. Also, that is where I connect with my fans the best because on Patreon, I respond to every comment and every message personally. So if you really want to get in touch with me, that is the way to do it. Hope you enjoyed today's show and we'll be back next week with another episode of Gay As Fuck. Bye, baby. Murder in there.